All right, and welcome back, everybody. We're still doing this, and now we're okay. done with important people. So let's just do it to Hubert. Okay. All right, where do you want to start? Do you still want to start with Hubert, or do you want to start with Byleth? Let's start with Hubert. All right. Yeah. The Emperor's confidant. Hubert devoted his life fully to the service of Edelgard, operating in the light and the shadows alike. He disposed of countless burdens facing his Emperor, using any means necessary. Though his ghastly appearance and what? imposing demeanor were ever feared, he uh, paid his reputation little heed, focusing instead on his loyalty to the Emperor. That seems like a nasty aside right there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, come on, narrator. <laughs> ghastly, that's... Look at, him. Look at those sunken cheeks and that hair over that eye, though. Uh, no, that's that <laughs> seems uh, that seemed unnecessary. That was unnecessary right there. Not like. All right. So we've already done Edelgard. We'll go to Byleth. Go to Byleth. After a fierce battle, Byleth and Edelgard finally brought the tyranny of a godlike being to an end. Spoilers. A wound. Yeah, yeah. Uh, though wounded in the conflict and stripped of divine power. Byleth continued to fight alongside the Emperor to bring true peace. He joined them in this fight, fulfilling his promise to confront those who slither in the dark head-on. In that darkness, Byleth and Hubert formed an unbreakable bond. It is said that, as a married couple, they were truly inseparable. This seems boring. Yeah, seems boring. That's yeah. boring. Bad. Yeah, bad. Bad ship. Even though in this, Byleth does get to be the wings of the hegemon. <laughs> Which is cool. <laughs> I'm not saying that's not cool, but no. But she yeah, could, she could be that even without marrying Hubert. <laughs> I know. All right, all right. Ferdy, good old Ferdy. Hubert and Ferdinand, the noblest of nobles. Ferd and Ferdinand became the left and right hands of Emperor Edelgard, competing constantly with each other to see who could be the more helpful. They were opposites: the minister of the imperial household, melancholy and merciless, and the prime minister, bright and compassionate. Still, they brought out the best in each other. As the empire became orderly and prosperous, the two came to be known as the nation's two jewels, and were remembered fondly for generations to come. Some say their fame made even Emperor Edelgard jealous. I think that might be a finish. Uh, yeah, um... I think... I don't buy it, but I think that's a really funny story. <laughs> uh, yeah. I think knocks it up to neutral. Neutral. I, I'm I can neutral, neutral for the two jewels here. Yeah, yeah. That I think that's what the two jewels is what knocked it up to yeah, uh, yeah, out of give, not finish uh, out of like a what the and suddenly I'm I'm on board again. Suddenly, so like yeah, okay, yeah. Good uh, job, okay. two jewels. <laughs> Go for it! Yay! All right, all right, Bernadetta. The marriage between Hubert, minister of the imperial household, and Bernadetta. <laughs> Leader of House Farley was so surprising to the public <laughs> <laughs> that it was much talked about even even outside of political circles in the capital. Bernadetta took the opportunity to survey the far reaches of the new Adrestian Empire, and in her absence, Hubert took well to the management of Varley territory. They proved to be an astonishingly good match, working together to protect Fodland from the shadows. It is said that they showed their affection for one another by wearing matching embroidered flowers. Okay. Oh, okay. Let, let, let me tell you, I was going for, during my playthrough, I was going for this ship, and it didn't work out because I pressed the wrong thing. <laughs> um, but I loved their interactions, their supports, because he's constantly trying to be kind of nice, except the way he's kind of nice, he's telling jokes that she doesn't think are jokes. They're also kind of horrible jokes. <laughs> Like, he's joking about being like, oh, I guess I re Yeah, no, I'm totally Someone going to... punch the microphone? Um, it might have been the cat. Okay. Um, the cat is standing next to the microphone. She might have whacked it with her tail. Um, I... I really liked it. I was going for it, and the funny thing was that he was trying to be nice to her, and... She was convinced that he was issuing death threats, <laughs> and it was really funny. So I I really like this ship, and I think it's written out really well. So yay, I like it. I 
I never would have thought to like it, because um, I, I, I happen to have a, you know, Bernadetta is a sweet creature that must be protected at, at all costs. Uh, uh, but uh, yeah, th those those little bits and 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 the uh, the just the admission of yeah, this is kind, this is kind of surprising uh, in in the description there. You know what? I'm I'm going to go for it. I'm I'm going to say it's a good one. Yeah, I've only seen I want to say maybe one or two of their supports, but even with just that, it was like. Wow, this is the only Hubert support where he's not being snide to someone. He seems to legitimately being trying to be nice. So nice, yeah. So yeah, I think I think this is a very good ship. I think this is a good ship. I approve of this ship. Excellent. All right. All right. All right. Hubert Dorothea, the mystical songstress. After the war, war, the Middle Frank Opera Company made a resurgence, in no small part, thanks to the patronage of Emperor Edelgard's confidant, Hubert. Dorothea made a comeback as a songstress within the troupe, which traveled all over Fodlan, putting a large share of its profits towards relief efforts. The Opera Company was warmly welcomed by the war-weary people as a source of solace, and became even more famous than before. It was not discovered until many years later that the troops' tour had been a covert operation, coordinated by Hubert and Dorothea to gather intelligence for the Empire. That is a complete DNF. That's, yeah, that's lame. Yeah. That's lame. Yeah. I feel like no, this could I have been a good ship, but they did not write it as one. Oh. Yeah. No, DNF. It's a DNF. Yeah. Way to go, intelligence idiots. You could have kissed. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You could have at least given subtle indications that maybe you were going to kiss. Aww. I know, you disagree, too. <laughs> you think that was silly. I understand. All right. So Hubert and the Queen of Bridget, Petra. Shortly after the war, Bridget renegotiated its diplomatic arrangement with the Adrestium Empire, ending its service as a vassal and becoming a full ally. As part of that agreement, Petra, Queen of Bridget, was wed to Hubert, Marquis Vestra. Some say that the marriage was purely political, ordered by Emperor, Emperor Edelgard, while others insist that it was of their own accord although they led busy lives and sometimes lived uh, separately. Still, they shared their home in the western Fodland village of Nouvelle, was filled with their many children, suggesting a lovely, loving union. Or that they kidnap children. <laughs> or that they kidnap children. I, I don't hate that. You know that I like political marriages. <laughs> <laughs> I don't hate it. I believe, I believe it. What's, uh, I, I, don't, I didn't see too many of these supports. What are these guys' supports like? I, I yeah, I don't a whole lot of their supports, yeah. I think it was mostly him checking out. Uh, like, so, you're not actually here to, uh, to betray kill. the, to, uh, kill Edelgard, right? Just making sure you're not gonna kill Edelgard, because I will kill you. Yeah. Did we make a decision? We, we, we haven't, we haven't voted on it. But. Oh, uh, well, then what do we say? I... I like it as a political union, which makes me uh, achieve at least neutrality. I buy that they would do this. I feel yeah. like I would need to know what their supports are like to be able to give them a good as opposed to a neutral. Yeah, yeah I wouldn't I, give them a good. I can't give them more than a good. I, I think it's... that there's, there's enough there that I can see that... Um, enough groundwork that I can, I can get to the neutral, but I can't go good. Okay, we're going to say neutral! Yeah. Neutral. Yep. Yep. Baird and the distant archer, Shamir. As confident to Edelgard, confidant to Edelgard, <laughs> uh, he was also confident in Edelgard. Uh, Hubert disposed of every burden facing his emperor by any means necessary and excelled at working in the shadows. Supporting him from the front lines was the former mercenary, well, second lines, she's an archer, uh, Shamir, who commanded the Emperor's elite troops. When the two married, they appeared from the outside to be little more than a lord of the Empire, Empire and his dutiful wife. In, re in reality, their nights were filled with fierce combat against rebels, assassins, and those who slither in the dark. It is reported that one of them was known to often state that to find love between life and death is a gift. It is unknown which of the two actually spoke those words. Okay, I vote bad based on dutiful wife alone. Do you oh. know Shamir? <laughs> <laughs> Have you met Shamir? Shamir. I, it, 
yeah, I see the potential of like, and then they both, and then they both went off and became, you know, ninjas together. Um, it's the romance in that that I don't see. Yeah. I don't know. Like, I kind of like. I kind. I kind of like it. I kind of like it. I don't know what it is about that, but I kind of like it. Okay, if we can upgrade it to neutral, I, okay. I, I can't. I can't go good. I gotta outvote you on good, but I can. I can go with neutral if that's. Yeah, it, it's it's a very mixed bag. There, there's some very much a mixed bag there. Um, it's just, I, I, I like the idea of Hubert and his like biting sarcasm, along with Shamir, who is never gonna like. Is, is not going to deal with that sarcasm and just smack the back of his head and go, shut up. Just Apparently tell not. Apparently not. She was very <laughs> dutiful. No, but it specifically says that that's not what they were actually like, that they were just pretending to be like that. Uh, that's true. That's true. Well, you can go good by Hubert standards. <laughs> 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 All right. So are, are we upgrading this to low good or are we keeping it at, at high neutral? Uh, You've made a good argument. You've made a good argument. I can go with low good. Low good it is. Yeah. Yeah. All right. And then I feel like this is a pretty easy decision, but what's our favorite That's ship? Definitely Bernadetta. Definitely Bernadetta. I mean, no question. Yeah. No question. Better than Edelgard. Yep. Even. I mean, yeah. That, what's, no, that solid. Do we have a, that, do we have a, a mix. do we have a second place? I Cuz I, I kind of like don't. Where, like, I kind of like yeah. I kind of like the political marriage with Petra. Okay. I don't. Yeah, there's, there's a lot of like I, I, the, the rest of the pack is pretty close. Yeah, uh, Dorothea really a, and Ferdinand were both do not finish. Oh no, Ferdinand. We decided the jewels was yeah, yeah it was it was, a, was enough to get into it. Yeah, uh, but it's just Bernadetta is so far out in front. Yeah, it's it's not yeah. even a close race. Yeah. Yeah, well, yeah, that's, that's pretty that's much that. 